Next we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about some properties and characteristics of functions and one of the most important ones to get across is that of continuity. Um, what we mean by a continuous function versus a non-continuous function. Um, it can be a difficult, uh, somewhat difficult um, idea to get across using the language of algebra, but it's much, much easier to visually see it. Um, if I'm talking about a function that is continuous, okay, what I mean is we have a function that, for lack of a better word, continues from left to right, beginning to end, without stopping. Do all sorts of manner of things in here. But notice that all the while while I drew it, I never stopped. And I never had to stop, pick up the pencil, and restart somewhere else. And the arrows indicate that this is going to go on forever um, to the right and forever to the left. So what we're looking at is a continuous function, a nice smooth continuous curve. Now not all functions do that. Uh, it is possible to have breaks in the graph called discontinuities. Let's go over three types of discontinuities. The first one, uh, maybe we have a curve that looks like that. Yeah, so it's pretty much continuous everywhere, similar to the one I drew on the last slide, except I put a little hole in it. Okay, and sometimes it's even defined, you know, maybe I put a solid point right here, I don't know, that point can be there, not be there, it doesn't really matter. Um, these are called removable. Removable discontinuities. They're called removable because we can remove them. Sometimes it's possible to redefine the function at this particular x value so that we fill in or plug the hole, kind of fill in the gap or fix it, so to speak. Um, the other two are a little more serious, uh, I suppose. Maybe is we're not going to be able to plug the holes sometimes. Uh, sometimes we see functions that maybe look like this. I don't know, maybe we're coming in like this and there's an opening and then maybe up above it does this. It's not. These are called jump discontinuities. Okay, the name is easy to, to understand. We are physically jumping from one y value down here to another y value up here. It's called a jump discontinuity. And then finally, one more discontinuity. Uh, these we study a lot in this particular course. Um, maybe you've got a graph that does this. These are called infinite discontinuities. Infinite, you know, it kind of jumps. The graph goes down, then we've got to jump up here, um, but it goes down forever, and it goes up forever here. Uh, the function approaches infinity at this particular x value. Okay, so three types of discontinuities that you might run into in this particular course. Okay, the next property of functions, characteristics of functions I'd like to look at is uh, increasing, decreasing, constant behavior. Again, it's something that can be very easily described or looked at visually with the graph. An increasing function might look like this. Notice that the graph goes up 
from left to right. Okay, going up, meaning that it is increasing. A decreasing function, on the other hand, notice as I drew that, the graph goes down from left to right. Okay, visually those are very easy things to see and we I haven't said it yet in this video, but we always read graphs from left to right. You start on the left edge and you go to the right end. Okay? And so if I get on the line as I go from left to right, what's my finger doing? It's as I'm tracing it, I'm going up. And here as I'm tracing from left to right, it's coming down. Increasing, decreasing. Um, a constant function on the other hand is one that does neither up or down behavior. It might just look like this. Okay, so neither increases or decreases. Doesn't go up, doesn't go down. Just goes straight across level. This next example asks us to analyze the function for increasing, decreasing behavior. Uh, so we're going to be able to do all that just by looking at graphs. So I begin by typing in my function, x squared divided by x squared minus 25, and I graph it, so I zoom standard. The graph looks kind of like this. I guess not kind of like this, it looks like this. Um, let me do a rough sketch of this graph on paper, and then we'll talk about the increasing, decreasing nature of it. Okay, just real quick, real rough sketch on paper. All right, our graph looks about like this. That's what our calculator screenshot kind of looked like. Now I went ahead and threw in the values negative five and five because for the sake of uh, analyzing the function's behavior right now in this course, just learning, getting comfortable with increasing, decreasing behavior and different characteristics and properties of functions, you're gonna be given graphs, given these numerical values. Later on, we'll definitely be asked to find them on our own, and, and we'll show you how to do all that. But for right now, I'm just throwing them on there for you so we know where they're at. Now, as I trace the graph from left to right, I'll always start on the left. Now, as I come here and start to follow, you know, look and see, what am I doing right now? Am I going up or am I going down? It should be pretty clear that I'm going up. Okay, So I am increasing right here. Okay, as I get on this line, I'm still going from left to right. Notice right now I'm going up. So I'm increasing here. When I get to this point right here, the graph turns and it's coming down, so that's decreasing. And when I get right here, it's definitely coming down. Okay, so there I've kind of identified them. Increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing. Let's write them out and we'll be finished. It increases from, I'm thinking x values, negative infinity to negative five. Negative infinity to negative five. It also increases from negative five to zero. Negative five to zero. Now I don't just go negative infinity to zero because that would include negative five. But as we just talked about discontinuities, there is no, it just doesn't continue through negative five. There's a definite break in the graph. It's decreasing from zero to five. That's zero to five. And from five to infinity. Again, two intervals required here for the same reason we needed two intervals on that one. One more, asked to analyze the function for increasing, decreasing behavior. I'm again gonna look at a graph of this. I could show you the graphing calculator screenshot, um, but this one's relatively simple to, to graph. And even if you've forgotten some of your algebra two 
Um, it'll be a good little bit of review right here. Um, we're just doing real rough sketch. I don't need exact points. You know, so what do I know about this? The square makes it a parabola. The plus three moves everything three units to the left, if you recall that. And the negative flips it upside down. So it looks kind of like this. It's an upside down parabola. Three units to the left. Okay, so what is it doing first? Well, you know, don't be confused by the arrow pointing down here. If I get on the line right here and go to the, my right, graph's going up right here. So it's increasing. And then when I get to this point at three, it turns and it starts to go down. It's decreasing. So I've got an increasing interval from negative infinity, negative infinity over here on the left, to negative three. I've got a decreasing interval from negative three to infinity.